All right, welcome to another Hickory Hacker course vlog. Today I'm playing the front nine at East Hartford Golf Club, a course that I played last year on the back nine, did one of my first course vlogs at. Uh, the front nine here was designed much later than the back. Uh, it was designed by Al Zacoris with Warren E. Smith, the original architect. And the twist today is I'm using clubs that I'm calling outlaws and oddballs, uh, band clubs, patent clubs, and specialty clubs that are just kind of out of the norm. So here's the scorecard for the front. Um, it's a pretty straightforward layout that we'll get into as I go. Uh, first hole is a par 4, 305 yards, very short um, start uh, to ease you into your round here. It's one of the more interesting holes on an otherwise ho-hum layout in my opinion. Uh, the back nine here is more interesting to me, uh, but I figured this front nine would be a good opportunity to show you some interesting clubs. So this is the first time I've swung this club. Pretty happy with the result. Uh, the collectors will probably cringe when they see what I'm swinging with here. It's a Spalding Model C Spring Face. Very collectible club. Uh, the interesting thing about this one is the face, which was an extra piece of metal riveted onto the face to kind of give the club a spring effect. Uh, this one has 15 degrees of loft and it's a C9 swing weight, so it's a nice club to swing. Uh, the original shaft on this one was broken and I replaced it um, so I could try it out. I figured the collectability was kind of lost as soon as it wasn't original through and through. Um, so that's why I'm trying it out. So with about 105 yards left here, I'm using a 46 degree spade mashie that I'll show you later in the round. Uh, two bunkers protect the green on this short hole and obviously I end up finding one of them here on the right. So now I'm using the Iron Man Walter Hagen concave sand wedge that was banned in 1930. Uh, Bobby Jones used this club, uh, but it tended to hit the ball twice. And I didn't hit the ball twice here, but what I've noticed for me is that it sprays them right real easy, kind of like a little hosel rocket. And I'm still trying to figure out how to use that club properly out of the sand. Using the 46 degree spade mashie on this chip. And you'll notice two other people I'm playing with today. Uh, this was a Connecticut Hickory Golfer outing. So I've got um, Mike Oatley on the left here. Uh, now he's on the right. <laughs> and uh, the other that you'll see peeking in and out of the videos will be Jacob Orcutt, who is the uh, co-founder and vice president of our group. For putter today, I'm using the most famous of band clubs, this Schenectady center shafted putter, which Walter Travis used to win the 1904 British Amateur in which the Royal and Ancient Golf Club promptly uh, banned afterward, um, kind of upset that the American golfer won with a weird putter. Uh, moving on to number two, it's a straight ahead par four, 397. You've got the trouble on the tree with the trees on the left, uh, plenty of room on the right. Uh, I'm using here off the tee, a club that I'm, another club that I'm hitting for the first time. This is a Burke, um, metal faced driver and um, kind of a cool club that I get along with later on in the round not this shot that one was tree bound from the start uh, but I like the feel of it and it took me a few holes to get into a rhythm with it but I did hit some nice shots with this later on so couldn't find the ball taking a drop uh, this is where I found the limitations with the Spalding spring face uh, at 15 degrees and with a pretty severe leading edge. It's just not a good club to hit out of the rough or pretty much any shot that's not off of a tee, in my opinion. Uh, other guys might be able to get along with it better, but I was just having a difficult time. So now, um, trying out a uh, another club for the first time. <laughs> that's an anti-shank Gibson made by George Smith. And I'll show you that club uh, with a better shot later in the round as well. Uh, that was a diff another club that I was just having a hard time with the turf. Uh, East Hartford, at least on this particular day, was pretty soggy, so a lot of these clubs are digging into the turf more than I liked. But there's another nice shot with the 46 degree spade mashie to kind of get me back in, uh, back on track. The one thing I'll say about the Schenectady putter, in my experience, is that I'm really good with lag putts on it for some reason. Um, but shorter mid-range putts, um, not as consistent. This one ended up settling real nice. It was a good way to finish a pretty rough hole. Nice putt, Mike. All right, so now I'm moving on to three. It's a sh another short par four. 
A little bit of a slight dodge to the left there. Uh, the green's kind of tucked behind the trees off the tee there. Uh, and it, it, the, the fairway rolls a little bit too, so it's kind of nice. Um, I was feeling pretty good about the Spalding off the tee on number one, so teeing up with it again here. Got way too aggressive on that downswing, and uh, obviously you see the result there. So that puts me in a bit of trouble, um, but an opportunity to use what I think is a pretty cool club. Uh, this is a Pinehurst run-up, so it's really meant for approach shots to kind of uh, you know, use the fairway leading into the green to your advantage, but I found it to be a pretty good shot for uh, punch shots as well because it's got a shorter shaft on it, and I believe it's 21 degrees of loft. So here I'm just trying to punch out. I got a tree right behind me and uh, just trying to get this back into play. And was pretty happy with that. Uh, you know, as, as a uh, mid to high handicap player, you start to get pretty good at rescuing yourself out of uh, tight spots like that. It's one of the better aspects of my game because I'm there so often. Here's the Smith Model Anti-Shank again and a better result. That was my best shot of the day with it. And um, I, I think it's an interesting club, but I just don't think I would game this all the time. Um, here's a closer look. It's got this interesting design with the uh, weight at the uh, toe and at the heel, and then the anti-shank aspect is an offset hosel, which limited opportunity for the ball to hit the hosel and therefore shank the ball. Uh, I think it probably does work as an anti-shank club, but uh, I can find all other ways to mess that club up. Um, so, not going to be using it regularly. There, I got an unfortunate hop. Um, otherwise would have ended up pretty nicely uh, using the Pinehurst run-up run again for its intended purpose kind of there. And here's one of those mid-range putts that I have trouble with with the Schenectady. Also, I, to my credit though, this was a pretty severe um, back-to-front slope. I hardly hit this one and it took off on me. So moving on to number four, first par three of the course, and it's a short one, 123. It's got uh, trees on the left and then a bunker on the right, uh, but it's a fairly straightforward par three. Uh, I like this one. This is my favorite on the course. And I'm using a 37 degree deep groove mashie uh, that I'll show you here in a second. I've used this club before, so I was pretty comfortable with it right off the bat. And um, one of the more consistent clubs I used over the course of the round. So let's take a closer look at the uh, the deep face here. Uh, this is a dead stop deep groove made by Spalding. Uh, deep groove clubs were uh, another one of these clubs that uh, players were successful with, but eventually USGA and RNA both banned. Uh, 1925 was the ban date on these. And uh, you know, some guys think that they help them spin the ball on the green like modern grooved wedges do. I've never noticed that, but I have noticed that they eat up balls really well um, because of those grooves. Uh, unfortunate that I didn't get both Mike and Jacob's great sand saves on this hole. Uh, you saw the balls up near the, the flag on that previous putt. Uh, they both had really great shots, and I thought the wide angle of the uh, camera picked it up, but unfortunately it didn't. So here you see more struggles with the uh, short to mid-range putts with the Schenectady. So number five is the first par five on the course, and it starts up at an elevation, and then everything else is pretty much downhill from there. Um, you've got kind of a narrow chute to keep it in, but uh, I like this hole for the most part. Uh, you get some nice rollout if you keep it in the fairway and, and hit the slope. So I'm using the Burke metal face driver here.
little bit of a better result, pulled it a little bit, but uh, enough room on the left side there that I, I still had a clear angle okay. back into the fairway. Little, uh, too much. Right over my head. I could hear so it. I've got a ways to go yet on this hole, but figured I would uh, try to pull out another nice shot with the Smith model anti-shank oh, and no on. dice. That was just a poor shot. This club's too easy Didn't to do that with. Turf, good turf contact there. So now I'm moving on to the spring face, see if I can uh, work something out of the fairway with this. No dice. <laughs> so I was stubborn with these clubs because I wanted to really test them and see if there was a, if it was my swing or if it was the club. I'm sure it was my swing mo most of the time. But uh, they were definitely tougher clubs than I expected them to be in certain situations. Finally had a nice shot here. Uh, that was with the 37 degree deep groove. I, I really like that club on approach pitches. Um, anything from about 120 yards in, uh, I'm pretty comfortable with that club now. So from the back of the green here, I'm using the 46 degree spade mashie. And I just chopped at that one, not very well. Um, not a good result there. Moving on to number six, it's another par four, 416 yards with a nice little creek there that kind of disrupts your approach. Uh, interesting thing about this hole for me is I don't really know how the fairway plays because I'm hardly ever in it. I'm usually off on the right side for some reason. There's a magnet over there to my tee shots. And as much as I uh, try to line up differently, I always end up over there. And that's where this ball's headed too. The upside is there's plenty of room over there, so um, even though you've got the trees kind of blocking your entrance back onto the proper hole, you can kind of play alongside of it, and so that's what I decided to do here. Um, that creek was going to run in and up at a spot where it was going to be tough for me to find a, a place to, to uh, drop this ball safely, so I decided to just keep playing alongside the second hole here. Actually, I'm playing alongside the hole I'm supposed to be on, playing up the second hole, and... Um, trying to find a good spot to pop it back over these trees. And I found it here. So I'm using the 37 degree deep groove again. Pretty comfortable with this, this club, as I mentioned before. And another nice result here. Yeah, one of these days I'll get to play that actual hole, but for now, <laughs> this, is where, this is where I'm at. So from the back of the green again, using the Schenectady, Hoping that I can get a, a nice lag putt to get close. Yeah, unfortunately I didn't read the speed on that very well, so left that well short. Winnipeg. I wonder if it's the mesh pattern. <laughs> I don't remember what I was talking about there. Anyway, number seven, par four, another short one, 313 yards, dog legs left, uh, drivable hole for modern clubs um, for some golfers. Uh, for me, I'm just trying to hit it as far as I can. I'm aiming at that tree that's basically straight in line with my ball. And um, this was, uh, this ended up being the best shot of the day with the Burke metal face driver. Nice shot. 
So I was real happy with that result. Work. Right where I was aiming. And uh, this was uh, another nice shot here coming up. This is with the Pinehurst run up. Had to keep it low to keep under to stay under those tree branches there. At about a hundred yards. Nice shot. And did just Good what I wanted. Right. I actually got a nice hop there. Not a bad result at all. Let's take a closer look at this one. So uh, I believe this club was made by McGregor because other mod I've seen other models of it, uh, but this one was made specifically with the Donald Ross signature, uh, 21 degrees. It's light on the swing weight scale, but for the kinds of shots I use with it, it works pretty well. Not a bad lag putt there, uh, but you can see the wind starting to whip up here. I don't know what this was, but um, it got uh, downright gusty here, and I had to step away from this putt because I had debris in my eye, and then obviously knocked the camera over. So that, that was a little bit, a uh, little bit of drama, and it ended up messing up the rest of the hole for me. Little comeback here though should uh, drop pretty easy though. <laughs> anyway, oh, <laughs> moving on to number eight, the second par three on the front, another short one, 127. You've got the uh, mental obstacle of the water in front of you there, and then a couple bunkers, so you got to you know place this pretty carefully. Um, but other than that, it's it's you know you're just trying to get it up in the middle of the green. using the 37 degree deep groove and just pulled it a little bit but not too bad ended up settling all right in front of the green hitting it pretty straight so by this point in the round i'm using the 46 degree spade mashie for these chips all pretty much all the time and um I'm, I'm considering putting this in my primary set. I was able to do a couple different kinds of chips with it, and uh, you'll see later in the round a nice uh, sand save. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking of gaming this club on a regular basis. Yeah, just another inconsistent putt with the Schenectady. Yeah, I just don't get along with the center shafted designs. I, I like the uh, more traditional heel shafted blades. So final hole on the front. This is a pretty sharp dog leg left. Uh, it goes uphill once you get to your, your second shot. Uh, this is probably, in my opinion, uh, the second most interesting hole on the front nine. Hoping to maintain the momentum off the tee with the Burke metal face driver. Just ended up topping that a little bit. Uh, not a little bit, a lot. But kind of got a stinger off of it and um, Six inches above it, it, the ground. it got out there pretty far despite its trajectory so stubborn as usual I'm using the spring face here again thinking uh, I've got it figured out now and I don't I barely hit that 15 yards But I'm far enough away and it's the ninth hole that I'm just going to stick with it I better contact that time but ended up pushing it way right and uh, I, I think that was pretty much that sealed the deal not a club that I want to hit in any situation other than off a tee and that left me with this precarious shot but I like these they're kind of fun because if you pull it off it looks good that one didn't look so great that was the 46 degree spade mashie and uh, then decided to use it again out of the out of the sand instead of the concave sand wedge and as you all know who have been watching my course vlogs, I've been having a hell of a time getting out of sand consistently. But that approach seemed to work pretty well, and I think for most bunkers I'd be able to do that. So I'm going to try this club as my primary sand saver and uh, hope I can continue the momentum. Here's a closer look. It's a waffle face made by Croydon. Uh, so similar, you know, treatment as the deep groove. They were trying to find different ways to put spin on the ball. Uh, this one's got D7 swing weight, so it's pretty heavy. 
And um, yeah, I like it for shots around the green and out of the sand. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep trying to use it. Would be nice to close it out with a good putt here. I <laughs> just missed it. So not my primary putter and not going to be my primary putter. That'll wrap up this Hickory Hacker course vlog. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this closer look at some interesting and weird golf clubs. I'll be using these and some other odd clubs in the future on other nine holers. In the meantime, if you enjoyed what you saw, I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing.